everybody who opened for me this weekend so far, huh? We had all kinds of amazing speakers opening for me. You didn't like that joke at all, Sue, did you? That's good, thank you for having me. This is a dream gig right here. This is what, people always go, what do you want in a gig? And I always tell them, if you can get, you know, 14 internet marketers randomly scattered in a room that seats 40 people, I'm happy. So thank you very much for that energy. I tell them to keep the lights the same. I don't want you to be under any illusion that I should have a spotlight. I want you to be just as lit so that you're psychologically ready to heckle me at any point. And uh, I like it also when half my audience is where, uh, using a laptop. That's really good too. So it's fantastic to come and look over these rooms now. They have laptops. And, and what's funny is some of them don't have uh, Macs still. So if you're, if, if you're not using a Mac, I'll, uh, I know you need longer to process these jokes. And uh, I know you have a virus. <laughs> okay. A virus joke, ladies and gentlemen. High five, Wall. Oh, we're having a lot of fun. Usually there's a wall behind me. This is a bizarre illusion thing where it's like we pretend it's a room and it's not. It could fall off at any point. But there's a curtain behind you that's a weird thing. So, um, I'm honored to be here. Uh, this is, uh, I, I love doing this. Um, I, I'll start off right now. I only have 10 left. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I have, I have 10 left. It's usually 40,000, but today only it's 300. I, I checked in with me, and it turns out I can get you a discount So for the thing I've created. Um, I love doing this so much. This is, you guys are good people, you guys are good laughers, you're good. Like, you usually have to dump my stuff up. Like, if I go like Dayton, Ohio and do a joke, they're like, get her done, racing's the sport, but you! But like, you guys are getting good, weird stuff. I like you because you guys are more open. These are different crowds. Like, you're happier because you're, you're more open, you understand that life isn't just, when the economy says jobs are open, you go get a job. You know, you can create your own thing. You guys are happier, you're here to have fun, and that's my biggest goal. I, I, I believe that every single moment, our only job is to have fun, that's it. Everyone's sitting here, you know, we talk about our lists and these things, and those are important, but I believe those are a byproduct of uh, being in the moment very much, and I'm gonna talk to you about that a lot today. Um, I don't know why I told you that. I just told you to be in the moment, and then I told you, coming up, I'll tell you other things, which is really weird. I'm like, in the future, I'll tell you more about the moment, but not now, um, so it's a weird thing. Um, Eckhart Tolle wouldn't have liked that joke. Actually, he wouldn't have even known about it, because that joke's now in the past. So, before they know who Eckhart Tolle is, that's good. So the other people are like, how can I monetize Eckhart Tolle? So, if you were here, I know several of you would be like, we're starting a new thing I'm about to launch. So, that's how everyone talks. It's like, everyone here is about to launch something. Congratulations, we should all just do it right now. Let's all just launch the same thing with each other. Let's just get it over with. Stop passing up cards. Right now, launch it. Just get, that'd be weird. Just be like, and then just link to everyone else. Where you guys are like laughing, but seriously, that would be really smart. If you were gonna do that. Like, you realize that? So, that's how we work though, right? We go, oh, that'd be funny, that'd be cool, huh? But seriously, how do we do it? And then like we stop this brilliant idea from actually happening. That's how, that's the funniest thing. You know, like I know that happened with Family Guy. Like there were probably times where someone would say like, wouldn't it be weird if they blah, 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 and they go, <laughs> but then there's always one producer on most shows that goes, yeah, but seriously, what are we gonna do? You know why? Because he says, what has been done so far? I wanna know what's been done so far. And a lot of times you'll have these brilliant ideas come out of you and then immediately you might go, but seriously, I can't do that because I've never seen that done. Which really means because it's original, right? You're doing something different and original. So all the time what we do is we go, I can't do that because it's, you know, I've, I've, ne I've never seen that done. Well, thankfully, like, Jim Carrey didn't see things that way or Andy Kaufman or Steve Martin and, and many other people. And, and so, but I like you guys because you're here having fun. I've realized you can make anything fun. That's a big thing. I'm gonna make my death fun, right? Because if you if you get if you can figure out how to make that fun, your whole life's gonna be amazing. Because that's the only thing, right? You go, I'm gonna make my death fun. So a lot of people worry all the way until their death. They're like, you guys are gonna die, and then they die, and they're like, see, I told you I died. And you're like, how are you talking to me? That joke goes really well when the mic works all the way through it. <laughs> but seriously, like. Radio Shack for donating the equipment tonight. I said Radio Shack, but you couldn't hear the joke making fun of Radio Shack because the mic went out while I said it. Do you have another one? Is that okay? Do you not? Is it? That's cool. That's great. That's not a Mac. Two crappy mics. No mic stand. You have a table for my mic stand. That's great. It's like, I mic stand. like, we have a table? Oh, great. That's like when you go to the mall and they're like, can I get a towel? And they're like, we have these steering wheels. And they're like, that's not at all a towel. 
see, that's what just happened, right? This mic went out, and I went with it. Not to be cocky, but I went with it, right? And it was a moment. That's what people don't understand. All the time, people are preparing for their set, or their pitch, or their date, or whatever, and they literally walk around all day. I see people before they speak. It's the weirdest thing. At noon, they get a call that they have a gig that night, and then at noon, they start pacing and thinking about the thing coming up, which is the weirdest thing, right? Because now they're not in this moment, and they're in that moment, and they're picturing how it's going to go bad. They're coming up with nerves. They're cre they think they're reacting to their nerves, but they're actually creating the nerves, right? So they literally plan all day, going, okay, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I want to make sure that I say this right, blah, 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 I hope I do this good. What they also are doing, and a lot of people don't notice this, when you're anticipating something up, you're practicing practicing. You're not practicing being in the moment, you're practicing practicing, right? So like people that, even when they say I'm gonna meditate, it's funny when someone says I'm gonna meditate for 90 days and then I'll be in the moment. You're like, <laughs> you're just going into the future and you're in the moment, you are the moment. Like that's, you are up here, you're here, that's it. As creepy as that sounds, as weird as it sounds, as, as airy fairy fluffy thing as it sounds, you're only this moment. And that's the weirdest thing is how many people practice being in anticipation. Why do they do that? Because later their set's coming up and they're under an impression that that set coming up is something that's going to complete them, that's bigger than what they are, that's more important than what they are. And we do this with dates, like you'll be fine, you'll be doing fine, and then a hot girl will walk by and you're like, oh, you like corn bacon fit? Like why can't we talk if someone of the opposite sex just shows up, right? Because we all of a sudden think, I need that person, meaning I'm not complete without that person. Does that make sense? So I need that person to be happy. And people do that with their sales, they do that with their lists, right? They talk to their lists that way all the time. They're like, because you need to sell. So if selling is your fulfillment over the moment, you now have to do whatever you can to sell. And that's why we sometimes say, I only have 10 left, right? Because we gotta put, create scarcity and tricks and blah, blah, blah. My philosophy is if you start playing like this, all the time, bizarrely, you will create content that's so amazing that people will just want to show up because it's just good, right? Definitely still offer and stuff. I'm not against selling, but I'm saying if that is your God, if that is your thing that will fulfill you, you're creating a situation where you're in lack while you're talking to them because if that thing fulfills you, you're saying I'm incomplete without that thing. So if it's like a noon and I get a call that I'm doing Conan that night or I'm doing Comedy Central or something like that, the only thing I'm doing is playing all day. Because any time I'm sitting here focused on the thing coming up, I'm under the illusion that that thing is more important than the moment that I'm in, right? So this moment right now is just as important to me as, as when I'm on Comedy Central or when I'm <laughs> about to go to sleep or watching a movie or whatever. And because of that, there's a byproduct of unlimited money, but that's a byproduct. That's not the thing and that's not the reason you're doing it. Does that make sense? But the reason that there's that is because I just found out last night that I was doing this talk today. Okay? Now, if I was in a state of, I have to make this good, which by the way, I haven't planned one thing. This, seriously, the stage makes you two feet higher, that's it. Do you understand that? Because all day, it's so funny, if you do an hour long talk, and then you're sitting here practicing, you don't realize the other 23 hours a day, you're in the moment. When you're at the bar with your friend, or you're at the house, you're playing. So why do we then later go onto the stage and we finally stop being the way that we're all day? Do you get what I'm saying? So if it's noon I, and I find out I'm on Conan, I, I just play all day. And, and that's the weirdest thing is how much stuff comes out of that. Because when I found out that I had this gig, um, it didn't, I, I'm honored to be here, but it didn't matter. Like, like it didn't, it matters equally to everything else. And because of that, I found other opportunities before it. But imagine if I was trying to make this set really good by writing every joke and saying, I'm gonna do this first and make sure I say this. So it's like eight o'clock last night, and I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody else, right? But instead, in the moment, I end up meeting other people, and I end up meeting other people, and I go, oh, it's good to meet you and work with you. And because of that, I end up with like 500 to 1,000 emails a day, for real, with people that just wanna work with you naturally because I'm not trying. Does that make sense? I'm just being. And that is the most important thing to me because I see it. When people ask me immediately, well, how big's your list? I know that's where they're thinking, right? That's where their thought is. So I know they're in lack, and they think that who they are is their list. So if that list leaves, they're gonna be really depressed, right? And it's funny because I know that this is close to almost spiritual, but it's like true though. And I'm gonna tell you how I found out about it. 
And first I was in that achiever place. And I was able to do a lot of stuff because I believe that first there's a victim mentality that we have, right? Where you think everything happens to me, you know? This is a friend of mine, Shore Slocum, talks about this. I don't know if anyone knows him, but he's awesome. But he does a thing where he talks about this, and I've, I've kind of translated it in a different way from my experience. But he said, there's four levels of this. There's to me, where you think everything happens to me. We know people like that, right? In fact, what's really funny is how many people do we know like that? And then we start going to seminars, and we go to another level that still isn't doing the thing. It's saying you're going to do it. So people in the first level that are like, I can't do it, and we can step outside of them and go, that's a limiting belief, and I know you're, you're wrong on that. Then the next level I can see are the people that go, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're good at declaring crap. Right? Do you get what I'm saying? You've now become the guy that goes to seminars and goes, oh, that's cool. Because I know what most seminars are. Many of them are great, and we need a lot of these things, but a lot of them are one of two things. Tactics, you learn tactics, which is great. We need to learn tactics. But someone says, here's what you do. You call your list every two weeks, you call them again, blah, 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 and you do this thing. And then the person hears that, and they go, okay, so I just do this, and then I make money. Okay, so you're just hearing something and doing a job and making money. That's no different than being a janitor. That's no different, you're just doing something. The other thing is inspiration, right? They teach you inspiration which is kind of like buying the P90X workout system or an elliptical machine and then watching six, other, six days of other people doing it, right? Because that's what you do. You go here and you picture here people go, when I was a kid, I knew that I blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, oh, cool. God, it's not me. I'm not doing anything, right? So you come back and then you declare stuff. And you go, everybody, I figured out my 90-day diet plan. I'm going to do it. And then the next day, you'll start the next day, right? Not well, but tonight I'm going to eat all the pizza. I'm going to eat a lot of pizza tonight. So tomorrow I'm going to have my night. Then you eat all the pizza and you're like, I forgot that I love pizza. So I'm going to do one more day of pizza. Now your diet plan is making you fatter. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what people do all the time is they aren't actually just doing it. And it's funny because your mind goes, so what do I do? Now it's like you are in this. this. Just be it. Just keep going. The do is like this excuse, I need to say a thing that's coming up, right? So, I'm gonna pretend like there's water in this. So anyway, um, see, go with it, ta-da! So, oh, thank you, thank you. Can I have four people give me water? Thank you very much. I would like each one of you to pour one quarter cup into it. Thank you. So this zone, apparently, the mic doesn't work. That's weird. System. That's a very specific mic. Does it didn't say that on the box? Works in three quarters of the stage. Like, what's that? It's a hundred years old. Awesome. Good strategy. So, I actually have an event where I make fun of mics, and I'm going to teach you how to make fun of really big mics. I only have ten left. That's called. Like, Thank you so much. I'm Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm strong. I go to the gym and work on my Altoids. <laughs> They're curiously strong. So, so, the first place is to me, where you think everything happens to me. So we know these people, right? They go, it's because of the economy, it's because of the blah, blah, blah. That's what happened to me, blah, blah, blah. So they go through the stage where they're in to me. And then eventually, to me drives you down to the ground, right? Because it's just too overwhelming. It's too big. It's like, and your whole life is dependent on what people outside of you are doing. Like, think of that. How much of a victim are you if everything that's happening is based on what they're doing? So what happens is you release blame and you go to the next place, which is by me, which is where I'm going to make it happen. I get that everything is run by me, by me. So <laughs> I get that everything's run by me, right? So that's when you start going, I can have the number one company. I'm going to have the biggest list in the world. I can get that girl, right? Here's the problem with by me that I've discovered after a while. First of all, I'll tell you how uh, a great thing about by me. I remember when Comedy Central in 2009 put out their 100 favorite comedians, okay? And they told the public to vote on these comedians. They said, they said, vote on them. Now these comics were household name comics, like the biggest name comics. Like I'm talking Larry the Cable Guy, Jeff Dunham, Dane Cook, Louis C.K., uh, Chelsea Handler, all these comics, Daniel Tosh. So Comedy Central puts these 100 favorite comics out, okay? This is a very buy me question, but they told the public, they said, vote on your favorite comedian in the stand-up showdown. So I was two weeks into the contest before I even knew it existed. And there were two weeks left in the contest, and they were running all our specials, and the public was voting like crazy, and people that were household name comics were sending to their millions of followers, please vote for me in this thing. I just thought this question, how can I win this, okay? 
How can I? It's an answer that's very different than can I. It's a very cliche thing that teachers speak to tell you, but I used it and it's true. Like, it's true. Because my mind immediately, right when I asked that, said, what if you have a, a podcast where you thank everybody who votes for you by name? And right when I thought that, I was like, huh, what if I did that? That would be cool. So I announced on Facebook and MySpace. Remember MySpace? Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like if you went there now, it'd just be like a picture of a dumpster and a guy apologizing. <laughs> so I went on MySpace and I announced to everybody, if you vote for me in the stand-up showdown, I'll thank you by name. And, and immediately 400 people wrote me back because I had done Comedy Central. I had done a lot of teen movies. And so there were people around the country that were like, you know, that'd be cool to have me announce it. So. The next morning, I think, I, I did a little 10 minute motivational thing, and then I thanked uh, 400 people. And most of my friends were going, what are you doing? Like, you, you're just sitting here, taking like 20 minutes, thanking 400 people, like that's crazy. You're right, I could have been watching almost a whole sitcom. <laughs> right? Or I could be making 400 fans for life. Right? Four, and that's, and it's Comedy Central CD comes out, 400 sold. That's 400 YouTube videos immediately, right? That's 400 uh, movie tickets, so I do another movie, right? So, and I'm just making 400 people happy. Like, that's fun, and, and if I have the ability to do that just by thanking them, like, that's awesome, right? So I did that, and then the first day in the contest with 13 days left, I went from 18th to 8th place with 13 days left in the contest, right? And it was a weird moment. And then I realized all these people were watching, so I was like, okay, I'll thank, I'll do this again. This is so weird. Just, all right, you guys, I'm sorry. So anyway, <laughs> you guys don't get to see it. Maybe I'll went to that side. There's more people over there, but if you want to hear it, it's going to be, going to make this small room smaller. Um, so, it's so weird. It's like, this weird, just nothing that... But when you try to go, right? It's like when you're like, don't jump into the pool, and you're like, mom, now watch it, and you can't jump all of a sudden, and that was a terrible example. You can jump either time. So I'm sorry about that. That's my mom, Bambi. You know, I had that with her. Her name's not Bambi, we just call her that, because she's a stripper, and her mom was killed by a hunter. So, so she had me, by the way, I'm Kyle, and I have a brother named Kevin, and then my aunt had Lyle and Devin. Right. So you know how your grandparents could never tell you anything without naming everyone else in the family before they hit your name? Imagine my grandpa listens from him, we're like, and that's why we have a plutonium. Devin, Lyle, Kevin, Aunt Peggy, Grandma B, Ringo, Paul, Jackie, Marlon, Tito, Germain, Skeletor! The number seven, Corn. You, the fat one with the dimples, which made me mad, right? Because I only have one dimple. I don't know if you can see it in my beard, but... So... My grandma was really cool. She passed away not too long ago, and um, I love her a lot. My mom wanted an open casket, which was really weird, and my uncle wanted a closed one, and they argued forever. So they came with the coolest compromise. You know the garbage cans that have the pedals? <laughs> <laughs> when you step on it, the lid goes up. That's what we, had. we had that option for grandma, which is really cool. Really so you could step on it and be like, you know, I'd be like, I'm tired of looking at grandma, and they'd take it off, and it would close. The weird thing was there was another pedal that controlled grandma, which was so unnecessary, because you'd step on that, and she'd be like, thanks for coming to my funeral, you know, like, I would never say that, you know, because she was alive when she spoke, so. You guys are getting weird jokes. That was a weird joke. <laughs> that was a very weird joke. But you know what would be weirder is if two munchkins came in here, same time on a unicorn sphere, and they were like, what's up, I'm Oprah. You know, and you're like, you're two people. So there's weirder things that can happen is the point that I'm trying to make. I like that you like that. Wilbur Brimley, did you like it? Thank you. Brimley? Is that joke the right thing to do? Like Quaker Oats? I just heard Wilbur Brimley today. You guys, I'm waiting for someone to be like, don't you know that guy owns Atlanta? Like everyone in here, <laughs> everyone in here has some crazy credit. Like you meet them and they'll be like, you know who that guy is? He built Michael Jackson. Like, what do you mean? He built it. It's a crazy thing. So, so I, so I was back to this, I go up on tangents, obviously, a lot. And when I say tangent, I don't mean the math kind. I was so bad at math that when the question said, show your work on a separate piece of paper, I would draw a picture of myself looking at the Asian dude next to me's paper. <laughs> so, so, so the next, 
<laughs> so the next day, I ended up thanking 800 people, okay? Because I knew that the first day when those people were listening, that they were bringing their friends to it, right? So if you gotta hear this, so the next day, I did another little motivationally podcast thing, and then I thanked 800 people. The next day, I, that, and that day, I went to seventh place, right? Then the next day I went to sixth place because I was thanking 1,600 people, literally. Like it was around that, each one. It was almost doubling or over doubling each time. 3,200, and every day I was pulling up one more slot. So it gets down to the last week, and it's me, and then the famous ventriloquist Jeff Dunham is number one, and there's a week left, okay? And so Comedy Central wanted Jeff Dunham to win because he had a pilot coming out, right? So. This is what happened. They pulled all my special, on the last week, they pulled all my specials off, and they put 18 Jeff Dunham specials on, right? And every commercial break said, vote for Jeff Dunham in the stand-up show. Every commercial break was like, vote for Jeff Dunham. And everyone reacted like you did. And that was the first moment for me that I realized I'm so powerful that I just changed national television's program. <laughs> right? right? Literally just from saying, how can I, right? So there was this, and everyone was going wild, wow, Kyle, congratulations, like it was a week left and Jeff Dunham was still 100,000 ahead of me, but everyone was totally at this place like, wow, congratulations, man, you got second. And there was this weird moment where I was like, what if I could beat him? Like, with all this crap going on, I just pulled from 18th to second, what if I could beat him in this thing, right? So I had this, there was a weird shift where I, I don't know if you've ever had that where it goes from I can't to like, what if? What, oh, like, what, what do I do? Like, you know what I mean? That, that's what I felt. And so I was like, I, and then I just totally was repeating lines from other speakers I've heard. I said, you guys, my fans were all worried about it. They're like, we're gonna run a Jeff Dunham special. Now they were, by the way, after hearing all the motivation every day for 13 days, those fans were all like getting healthy and like getting A's on their assignment and completely associating it to my thing, right? And it was really cool. I was getting letters too with it and they were having, and it was really, it was the best feeling ever. And that was really actually the goal. I mean, yes, that other thing was the goal. It was still the achiever thing I wanted, but oh, it felt so cool, right? So I just said, it's not a problem. It's a test to see how bad you want it. And I believe very much that every single thing in our life is truly just a test to see how bad you want it. You want to get really healthy, but there's a Krispy Kreme everywhere. Like, that's a test to see how bad you want it, you know? You want to have a good, committed relationship, but you have a friend that wants to give you tickets to the Playboy Mansion. Anyone else having this problem? <laughs> that's a test to see how bad you want it, right? So that's it. Everything is just a test to see how bad you want it. So I was like, okay, I said that. And my fans went nuts. They voted like you wouldn't believe they were getting their friends in there. It became this weird thing that just became its own monster. And I'm sitting there thanking 10 to 20,000 people a day, like just having a blast doing it, making it funny and everything. The last, the Friday night before the Sunday that they announced the winners by, they, they announced the winners by airing our specials 20 down to one, right? So on the Friday night, um, there's, they, they pulled four more, like they pulled a Daily Show and Colbert Report and South Park off and put four more Jeff Dunham specials on. And <laughs> it was so obvious. It was like not even real anymore. Like really, come on, this is just the Jeff Dunham show now. Like you're not even. And so they run those things and I was like, vote for Jeff Dunham. And then the following Sunday, I sat there and watched as 20 showed up. And I, that was already crazy too, because it was like Louis C.K. You know, Mitch Hedberg, uh, David Tell, uh, Louis Black. I mean, just like the craziest names in comedy, right? And I'm like, I'm ahead of that guy, I'm ahead of that guy. And then I just get a call from the East Coast. They go, Jeff Dunham's in second place. And I won. I, got, I had 238,000 votes to 208,000 in two weeks. Right? So, that was a cool thing, right? That was a weird, very invincible feeling. Like, it was just like, no one knows how powerful they are. Like, it was just, you know, you know when you're outside of someone and they're in a really bad relationship and they can't see they can get out of it? That's how I feel with almost everyone. Like, I'm just like, I'm just like oh, I can, I can, you know, well, I want to do this, but I don't know if I can. I'm just like, oh, shut up. You're totally able to do that. Like, that's not even, it's so silly to me how it's even a question, right? But there was a thing in me that was so like, what else can I achieve? It was very the matrixy and stuff. So I was like, what else can I achieve? So I started, I was taking it way too far. I started teach, actually this was really cool. I started teaching comedians how to get in the zone and how to maximize their stage time and how to really be good in the zone. I actually partnered with the comedian Louis Anderson and we started teaching comedians this. The problem was, I didn't know my audience. So what I mean by that is comics are extremely cynical people. 
right? And and they come. That's what a lot of the jokes come from. It's a defense. It's a painful thing, right? So Louie and I put this thing out, and we're marketing to comics whose job it is to make fun of anything positive. We live in a society where if you say something positive, you're in a cult, right? <laughs> you can talk crap about people all day, but if you're like, it's kind of nice out, people are like, okay, Scientologist, like leave me alone. Like, I just said it's sunny out right now. I'm like, okay, all right, drink the Kool-Aid. Like leave me alone. So <laughs> like it's weird, you know. So. So I, we started teaching comedians, and the funny thing is, the, the last 20 years, I've trained myself to be as authentic as possible and find the BS in everything, right? So it's weird to me, too, because comics are like, dude, like, you guys, you guys have events, and, and I hear all the marketers have events and everything, and it's like, the money that it costs for Louis Anderson and I were like, 20 bucks? You want to come for 20 bucks? And the comics were like, okay, scam artist. You know, like, it was crazy. <laughs> so, you know, just picture, like, the event showing up. It's Louis Anderson and me with two Comedy Central specials, Louis, the legend Anderson, and there's 40 people in a comedy club who just are hung over and pissed that they're there, and it's just like, all right, what are you going to teach me? And it was just like, oh, that's our audience. And my brother phrased it. It was like we were putting a Lexus dealership in the ghetto. Right? <laughs> And so, so this is what happened for me. I taught it, and every day that we taught it, I got so good, and Lou got so good. People were, sh everyone was shifting, and it was amazing, and I felt so unbelievable. But I would hear through the grapevine that a comic would say something bad about me, and it was killing me, right? And I kept hearing it over and over and over, like someone said this bad thing about you, this other person said this bad thing. And you'd just be like, ah. Oh. And I started feeling so bad, sad. And I sat with Louie one day and I said, I, I have this thing where I just really care what these people think about me. And I don't know what it is. What's really cool was the question wasn't how do I change what they think? The question was, why do I have this thing where I care about that? Do you understand what I'm saying? When you have an issue and you start inquiring with your reaction to the issue versus, you know, ch instead of changing the situation, changing your perspective of the situation. You know? Because what most people do, especially if they live in that second place, is they try to change the situation, right? I broke up with a girl, I want her back. You get her back again, you forgot that you don't want her, and then you just keep <laughs> changing the situation until finally you learn some crappy lesson that's still wrong. It's like, you need a new girl. It's the other girl. You're not, it's not that you aren't happy alone. It's that you need to keep changing the situation. And that's what everyone's doing. Well, I'll quit my job, and if I have this many people on my list, then I'll be happy. If you think when something happens, I'll be happy, you're forgetting that what'll happen is you'll get the thing and then just go, what's next, right? If you think that thing will make you happy, right? If you go, when I get this thing, in fact, it's almost more stressful. You know, oh, if only I had, I'm working with someone here, my friend Paul, he inherited, can I tell him about this? Okay, so he inherited out of nowhere $26 million from a guy that he found out was his real dad six weeks before he passed away. And let me tell you something, Paul is, we're working on a movie right now where I'm, I'm working with him on this. He's definitely someone who can tell you point blank that it has made him extremely lost and extremely depressed because he was a working class guy doing all kinds of different stuff and out of nowhere, he makes all this money and because he hadn't gotten in the zone first and he made the money, he's now in a place of like going, so what's my mission? Because I thought, so he was thinking that when I have a thing, I'll be happy. Now he got it, and the other thing is the money also gives him a comfort to not go for anything because, well, forget it, I can just go back to the thing, yeah. right? So it's really a beautiful process because I'm working with him for 60 days on letting go, but what's fascinating is how many people think when something happens, I'll be happy. And that's an illusion, and he's lucky to be someone who got to get the thing because most people chase that until they're dead, yeah. right? So, so I end up, um, saying to Louie, I really care what people think about me. I don't know what causes this. I want to get rid of it. And then something really crazy happened. That day, um, maybe an hour later, there was a car that was going to take me to the airport. And I, and I go to my hotel room, and I look in, at my internet real quick, and there's an email from someone, and it says, hey, you scam artist. And it says, I read that blog that comic wrote about you. And there was an extremely dark, extremely dark kind of drug comic guy that wrote a blog about me. He didn't research it, he didn't know me, he didn't know anything about it. He just completely spelled out absolutely beautifully and really spins your emotion and everything on how I must be some scam artist or 
Uh, you know, if anything, if you're doing something positive and you're charging money for it, you're a scam. You want people's money. That's it. And what's fascinating is how much I didn't make any money doing stand-up boot camp. We were selling tickets for like 100 bucks to 40 comics a week, and Louis Anderson and I would fly out to the club, and we have to pay all our expenses, there's nothing there. Weirdly enough, as a comedian, when I go fly to the middle of nowhere in Maine and do an hour show for $15,000, that I'm doing for the money. <laughs> it's so funny how everyone that says you're just doing it for the money is doing something for the money. <laughs> right? Like, oh, you're just doing it for the money. Really? Well, what do you do? Do you not make money? Or is that not your thing? Do you make money? Really? Because you're a doctor. Are they not paying you? Do you not? Like, <laughs> it's like, it's so funny. So I, I read this blog, and this guy wrote how I must be a scam artist and just spelled it out. But what horrified me even more than that was I watched it get recirculated by the thousands in that moment. It went viral. And all the comics were reposting it. And it was like warning each other, like watch out for this new scam that's going on. And I can't tell you how much it hurt being in this, being in what I believe to be the, the, the closest level to my heart and having someone make that accusation. So I was just frozen and horrified, like scared to go into clubs, anything. But I had enough training to know not to go get addicted to something. Not to, you know, not to go, like, because I've e easily gone from that pain to go getting, going to get drunk, or, well, or even having that thing where I'm going to prove it to them, or whatever. So I told the car that was going to take me to the airport, I said, go without me. I'm going to figure out what caused this. Well, I'm going to figure out what this means. And I sat in the hotel for six days. I literally just sat, my friend Jason Moffat, who's here, is just awesome, and he was with me, he could vouch for this. I just was, like, horrified and traumatized by this. And I just didn't know what to do with it. And... I sat there kind of with my thoughts, you know, because that I realized later is an illusion too, and I just sat there with them. And then on day four, I had this moment where I was like, I'm gonna do this with this, or I'm gonna go tell the comics this, or I can't wait to have the next number one special. But then I also had this thing where my mind went, I can't do anything about what they think. So I release it. And it was, I had this choice, like I split, and it was like, I don't care. <laughs> it was like, or do this, or so, forget it, like I don't care. So I fly back home on day six, and I try to put a DVD player in the, in the DVD. And, uh, DVD I, I, that's why it didn't work. I was putting a player into a DVD. I, like, I should reverse this process. So it turns out you put the DVD in the player, and it works way better. So I put it in. If she takes more than two minutes, she's going poop. So, uh, uh, she's going poop. So, she walked a lot faster. She's not like she was mad. She's like, I am a DVD player. Like, she looked really good. So, I don't know. We'll time her. So, who's here with her? No? Awesome. Because it'd be funny if, like, someone here that was with her, like, we switched you. Like, you know, but if none of you were with her, then she comes back and says, where's my husband? I'm going to teach you to poo during my show. So, have you ever had, this is kind of dumb, but it's true, this happened to me. Have you ever had it when you're in the bathroom and someone in the stall is making way too much noise, like not even trying? I'll never forget when I was in the bathroom and all I heard was just, ah! Like he had a choir and a megaphone. So I did what everyone here would do. I wanted to see his shoes. <laughs> right? So when they walk out, you can identify them by their shoes. So I looked under the stall wall, this is true, and at the same time, he decided that he wanted to see if anyone was out. So you're getting what happened. Under the stall wall, our faces met. What do you say here? How are you? You know, like, there's no way out of it. So... See, once again, not to, not to show it, but I want to point out as it's happening that I made a mistake, went with it, she went to the bathroom, went with it, right? Here's what everyone does. They go, I got to do this thing and this thing and this thing. What happens is when you say, this is what I have to say, you become a slave to your content, right? And you don't go with the moment. Meanwhile, the real you would. If you're at your friend's house and you're talking in the earth ship, you comment on it. But people go, it has to be this way. And if the mic goes out, a lot of speakers are like, ah. <laughs> it was a part of my plan, you know, so what I'm saying is that letting go is a great thing. So, so, and this is how I actually got there. I put, uh, I put a DVD in the DVD player, it didn't play, and then I tried to put another one in, it didn't play. Finally, six DVDs in, weirdly, the, this is true, the movie Adaptation played. 
And there's a scene in that movie where Nicolas Cage says to his brother, he goes, in high school, there's a girl that you really loved, and she would say bad things about you, and you didn't care. And then he said, why is that? And the brother said, because whatever she says about me, she can't take away from me how much I love her. And then he said, you are what you love and not what loves you. And maybe I was just in enough pain at that time to hear that the right way, but that has become my entire philosophy now because I realize that if you're nervous about anything coming up, you are falsely being what people think about you. Do you understand what I'm saying? What are they gonna think about me? You are what you love, not what loves you. So people get nervous because they're like, I gotta make the sale, why? Because it'll make me fulfilled. That's what loves me. But when you go back to your childhood, you were just a kid playing and pretending you were a magician or a singer or whatever, and you were just doing what you love. So I really, for me, it's not just some quote like, you know, a, a poster with a cat hanging on, like you can do it, like it's, <laughs> it's like the real thing. And so I started getting that, and then I flew out to Miami, I was headlining the improv for a weekend, and uh, I realized, I mean, you are what you love, not what loves you, and so I started just loving everything all day. I didn't care how the set would go, because that's what loves me. So I sat there, I was just like, really caring about each person I met, and saying hi, and everything like that, and really fascinated by the moment, and then eventually I went on stage, and I did a show completely off the cuff, all kinds of new material was flying out, and then I got a standing ovation, and then the next day, but I didn't care. Like, I didn't care. I mean, that was nice, but it wasn't, what, I, oh, I got a standing ovation, everybody. It didn't matter, right? So I did it again the next day, two more shows, then two more shows, and then another show. Six shows, almost all new, all different material, six standing ovations, right? And so I started going, it's not about getting motivated at all, it's about letting go. And that's when you go to the third place that's called through me. So that's where I switched to that, where I started getting, because people think it's about motivation, they all, and it's great, it's a great stepping stone to, to go to that second place. In fact, that's why the speakers that teach achieving are the biggest ones, because most people are in the first one. Does that make sense? Most people are in the first one. So if you talk about the moment, that doesn't make sense to anybody. So if, that, if they're in a victim mentality, you have to approach them like, do you want to make a million dollars? Do you want a car? And they're like, because they're only thinking of me, right? They're not in the moment, they're just thinking yes. So that's why the, the, the 10,000 seat seminars and stuff like that are an achiever thing, which are completely necessary. That's why The Secret did so well, because it's like how to make money, how to get the car. And there's, it kind of has a little 2 a.m. 3 in it. It's cool, right? So in free, you're, you're, you're a, a through me, which basically means you have an intention set, but you are finding so many different routes to get to that intention, like a road trip, right? How does a road trip work? Okay, you go, I'm, we're going to go to New York, and then you release it. Right? And you enjoy the journey all the way there. But most people, what they do, if you're in the second level, would be like, oh, we're going to go to New York. Okay, are we in New York yet? The entire road trip. Like, oh, we're not there. And adding all this strain on yourself, right? Because of your own resistance to you not being where you are right now. Does that make sense? So in this third place, you're in a place that I call through me. And through me, I actually, short calls it that, but I now do too. <laughs> it's mine, thank you. There's other <laughs> stuff of mine. I pull out a Steve Martin banjo. So, um, <laughs> but, that's, but that's through me, and it's a very effortless place. And, and to give you an example, if you're in the second place, and you're, you're climbing a mountain, you're like, we're going to get there no matter what. When you're in the third place, you're looking around while you're climbing, and you find dudes with elevators everywhere. People with elevators all over that can just get you there. And what I mean by that is like, if I have the intention to become a very successful speaker and I release how, every single person here could be a, an opportunity or a connection to another opportunity or whatever. But if I'm in the place of control in the second place of going, I know how it'll do it, I don't leave options open for new things to show up. Does that make sense? So it's a big deal because in this place, weirdly, life is so effortless and there's no stress because I'm not worried about how the next thing goes. So I ended up coming up with this exercise that I want to tell you guys about because it kind of takes you from one to two and then eventually three, and it's really trippy. I was on my way to an audition once two years ago. And I was with a friend of mine and uh, I was going to an audition but I was in my head about it because at that time I had a slew of bad auditions. So I was, you know, you ever have that, you go to a job interview and then, then that's bad, so the next one you're in your head, right? So I, on, the way to the on the way to this audition, I decided to start talking about the audition coming up as if it already happened, okay? 
and then spelling out what happened, like in a long way, like for a long time, right? What was really nuts about this was we hear all the time to envision what you want, but when you do that, here's what's really weird. You're really spending most of the time analyzing if it's working, right? You're like, I can see myself in a car. I think this works. This is stupid. Like, that's what you're actually doing. But if you take the vision and you sort of past tense, your mind files it as fact and keeps going. It, it, it's because you've had breakthroughs before. You've had moments in your life, so your mind believes it because it goes, oh, it's just like that other breakthrough I had, so it gives itself proof. And then here's the weirdest thing. If you go through how you got there or how you did the thing, what happens is you're creating. You're creating, and your mind, when it was in fear, was consuming. Right? Uh, how do I get that? I need to get good. Because the same part of you that cares how your audition goes or how many people you have is the same part of you that needs to eat a hamburger. It's, it's, it's a vice. You're not cool with the moment, so you need this thing to fulfill you. Does that make sense? So I, on the way to this audition, just started going, dude, I remember when I went in there and I was so funny. I was in the moment and I was in the zone and it was the most crazy thing. I was blah, blah, blah. What was happening was my mind was using its imagination. It had no room for the worrying anymore. It was literally replacing it. And then my mind also was hearing what the vision was and spelling out how it got there, right? It was like, it's like Google. If you type in what you want, it like goes, here's how you get there, right? So if I said I had the greatest audition, blah, 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 then my mind started working from imagination versus habit. Most of us think from habit, right? Can I diet? Well, I used to diet, so it doesn't work, right? I tried to diet that one time. That's not me. So if anyone's analyzing at all right now, you're taking what you've seen so far versus where you are right now. Does that make sense? So it's an illusion. Analyzing is a total illusion, right? You're going, I, let me see if that works, but you're not including all the factors that you don't know are about to happen. You're taking things from what you've seen so far. It's a total illusion. So I started going, dude, I remember when I went into that audition and I was so good and I was just so happy and I was so positive and blah, blah, blah. And I just got in the zone. And then my mind just kept going. It was, and it was the best audition I've ever had. And she was like so shocked by how good I was. And she immediately called my agent and they put me on hold. And I said that thing, and the weird thing was, after doing that for about five minutes, I went into the audition, and my mind had just done it. So it was done. And I went in there and matched exactly what I thought, not what I was worried would happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I got, the, I got the audition, I went to producers on it, and then eventually, I think a black lady got it. But still, <laughs> if, but my point is, that exercise, if I said to you guys, do you guys remember, like, make this moment a month ago? Do you guys remember when you were at that event, and it was really fun, it was funny, and you, you know, maybe you heard all these speakers and you were tired and everything, but then you left, and then you were like, I'm gonna make this happen. And I, you sat down and you said, how can I do it? You spelled out the thing, blah, blah, blah. My mind right now is creating all these different ways because it's thinking from the solution. If you have a fight with somebody, you don't go, how do I get over the problem? If you were in the solution, you're like, and then I got our flowers and we had a good time, the problem is a byproduct's gone, right? So I wanna do this with you real quick because after I did that audition, I then um, went back home and did it with the next day, and then I would wake up in the morning, and now I wake up each morning and talk about the day coming up as if it was yesterday. And what's really weird is I'll be like, God, I remember when I just had the best day ever, and today I surprised my fiance, sorry ladies, and I was like, I surprised my fiance, and I gave her flowers and blah, 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 and weirdly enough, my day starts from imagination, not habit. But most people are starting their day from habit. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're starting their day from where they've been yesterday. So they go, okay, so uh, I guess today I'll get over that thing, or still I have to call that guy back. And you start from not this place of inspiration or in, in the moment, you start from this place of fear. You start from this place of what your story was or getting over something. So I would love to take a minute and give you guys this opportunity to do this because it is really trippy. And I wanna do it with you too after that. So everyone pick someone next to you or find a partner real quick. <laughs> Now, I want you to know, I know, I want you to know that I understand that it's not going to be perfect, but our need, our, I need, our need for it to be perfect is the problem. Our need for it to be perfect is the problem. What I mean by that is many of you are going to start going, I don't know how to do blah, 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 because you think you need to do it perfectly. I want you to be willing to do it as wrong as possible, okay? Do you know how freeing that is, by the way? Like, if I go do stand-up and, and I was nervous in the old days, I'd be like, I'm just gonna do it as bad as possible. And it'd be so funny. Because it's your mind's weird need to be right. That's the problem. You understand what I'm saying? But if you just go, I'm gonna just do it wrong. And I'm just gonna do it like I don't know how. 
So what I'd like to do is I want you to picture real quick a thing that you have coming up. It, and by the way, this can go as far as you want. You can make it so ridiculous and extreme and whatever you want. It's based on your limitations. So think of a thing that you want that you have coming up. Maybe you want to expand your list, or you want to put out a new video, or you want to ask a girl out or a guy out, or you want to just, I don't know, just have a fun or whatever. Pick a specific outcome, OK? Just and Is anyone having a hard time with that? Just anything. By the way, if you're having a hard time with that, that's because there's so many things. And that's the same with when you want it, when you start. Like, I don't know what to say. The problem is there's so many choices, right? I play piano by ear, and I'll tell people, go ahead and name a song. I want to see if I can play it. Almost all the time, no one can name a song. Because there's 8 billion songs. But if I say, name a Michael Jackson song, it's quicker. And if I say, name a Creed song, it's instant, because they have two hits. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, because I cut the choices down. And the best comics know that. The best comics will talk about the most specific thing. Like, you'll hear them not just talk about going to the store, they'll talk about in the car, like, what kind of car it was, like, you know, and, and how inside the car they had the dash here and blah, blah, blah. Specifics is such an important thing when you're speaking. Because everyone does this mistake of speaking in vague things. They think they're talking to a group of people. You're talking to one person several times. So when people think they're talking to a group of people, they start off by going, hi, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the eight, you know, like, let me tell you something. If someone came into your house and spoke that way, you'd get rid of them. You'd be like, you're weird. Like, get out of the house. But how does someone really talk? The way I'm talking, right? They go, dude, I was just down the street, blah, 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 and this car comes out, and they spell out the street. I was on 4th and Vine, and this car just comes out of nowhere, and it hits this fire, this red fire hydrant. Like, it's really specific. So my, my only mention there is that if you're lost, it's because there's so many options. So what I want to offer you is pick a very specific thing, whether it's health, whether it's a specific level in your career, a specific number on your list, or maybe your goal is even deeper than that. I don't know. Does anyone have a problem with that? Does anyone not have one? Excellent. So, OK, so pick it who's A and who's B. Awesome. So, so here's what we're going to do. A's. I want you to allow yourself to pick a thing that you're going to talk about. I want you to talk about it like this event here was a month ago, and this now thing you have is right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So A's are going to just go nuts and tell B how they accomplished it as if it happened. Like real, not like this. Not like, and then I did the thing. I don't know. It's stupid. Like, you're literally missing, I'm telling you, a lifetime opportunity because this thing once you get it, you'll click. This has made me so much money and got me so much farther in my life in so many different ways. But money's a byproduct, but I'm just, I know that's what you like too. So, so A's for a minute. If I can get someone with a stopwatch, um, A's, uh, like, I my phone died, but, okay, excellent. So A's for a minute are just gonna tell B how that happened and be willing to do it wrong. It's the first minute. It's not going to be perfect. This is your first time in the gym. Your first weight. It's not, you're not going to be cut immediately. So, okay, so ready? A's. Uh, one minute. Okay, so ready? Set. Go. You have no idea about this event. Okay, so the second the conference was about to come to an my partner ended up showing up. I was so nervous about what he was going to be saying, what he was going to do. It's a little bit of not too personal, um, but it was kind of our big shot because we had come up with this brand new app that was nice, with a brand new system that, you know, I had spent a lot of time the first couple of days meeting new people and really just kind of not really hyping it up. I didn't even know what what this like global feedback system is all about. Everyone loved it. I even saw it. He shows up and to my surprise, he ended up working the crowd. On top of that, brand new friends, people I had actually met him. It was surprising because I thought I had gotten We ended up getting an additional fund for the Alright, time. Time.
<laughs> Real quick, did any of the A's, not, I, know, I know not everyone will, but did any of the A's have a moment of either, whoa, that is possible, or whoa, I just proved to myself something. You felt something. I want to point something out to you. That was the first minute. Imagine if you did that for two hours. Because when I tell you, when I did this, I get about an hour in, and I'm sitting there going, and that's why I had lunch with Obama tomorrow. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's almost creepy because it's so easy once you get out of your head. And here's the other thing you're doing. You're bringing your creativity out, and you're not moving from fear, you're not moving from habit. That's starting to be your dominating thing. So it's weird and, because when you get around people with this, you start to see things as so easy. And that starts to be your driving place. So I want to give bees a chance real quick to do it. Um, if I could get another uh, minute on that. Excellent. OK. Bees, go ahead. Go. <laughs> It starts off as a fantasy, and it's like, and then I did this. And a lot of times people say things that are too vague. Like you hear people say, I just want to, I just want to change the world. That is a thing to say so you don't have to do anything, right? Because we understand that your job is to shift yourself. But when we say stuff like, and then I change the world, or you make the goal so ridiculous that you can't match, you can, you could match that goal, but if you're doing it to just make an excuse to not, it doesn't work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll just sit there and blah, blah, blah. But eventually what happens is it'll push you to an action. Because if I was like, okay, if I was like, um, let me try to think. Okay, so I'm speaking at an event coming up, and I'm trying to think of a big thing. Okay, Paul, our movie. Watch this, right? So, dude, our movie is number one. Like, immediately my mind goes, how to get number one, it, right? It doesn't go, it doesn't go like, oh, it's coming up, I hope it, blah, blah, blah. It goes, how to get number one. It's like, well, I started pooling everything I had. I started realizing I worked with Jim Carrey, so I went to the people at Gate and I talked to them. And then I started thinking to myself, I know every internet marketer in the world, and they'll put it out. And then I started thinking to myself of all the different ways to do it. We started going, well, we have Gail Kings. We started bringing other people into it. I brought all the comics into it that I know. I started bringing all the comics into it. And then when the thing came out, we just made it so good. We put the best editors on it. We made it such an important thing. We made sure that the best minds looked at it and had the best vision for it. And then I distributed it in everywhere, in science of mind places, in like Agape, those kind of bookstores. See, now my mind's on hyperdrive, right? It's coming up with other stuff. This really hasn't happened before. So I'm at Agape or like a raw, every raw food restaurant, we called them one at a time and had them put it out because it's very spiritual and positive. But what's cool about our movie was we did it more mainstream. In other words, we put mainstream comics, so it was like Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead or one of those movies that inspires people, but it's a mainstream way. It might have still had some swear words in it or something that the mainstream still felt like it wasn't too far off, so we kept it more of a mainstream. So this is the first second, right? I just started doing that, but my mind is getting all these specific actions that are proving to me that that fantasy is completely possible. So then you start getting actions. What's really stressful about it is you now are in a place where it's like, you better do the action. Like, yeah, 
<laughs> like instead of saying I'm here to change the world, like you literally are like doing this thing. You're like, and that's how I did 20 push-ups. And what's that? <laughs> yeah, now you have to do it. It's stressful too because now you're in a place where you have to do the thing. And I'll tell you this real quick, and then I I, I have to go right time-wise. I didn't. I saw you hold up a sign, but I didn't see the number. So, how much time do I have? How much they want? <laughs> really? Are you sure? How about, how about, can I just do? Ask them how much they want. I will, yeah. How much more can I do? Because I always say. <laughs> Thank you. Are you sure? I don't know. Because sometimes they'll be like, we need to be out here by six because we have like paper mache and like nine old people piling in. <laughs> um, so, this is fantastic. So, let me ask you this. Who, real quick, uh, would like to try it with me? Because I want to show you what I'm talking about. Want to try it? Okay, come up here real quick. Awesome. Give a round of applause. Okay, so this is really cool. So, I want you to see how important this is that you're saying it the right way because you're gonna also notice something about the dialogue when you hear her talk. So Christy, why don't you go ahead and go ahead and do it for me real quick and then we'll just hear where you are and what you said. What, so yeah. All right, so um, about a month ago, I decided that I was going to move and I got in touch with all my friends and I said, well, let's have a mastermind. Let's brainstorm about this and figure out how I can make this happen. And uh, we can make this happen together uh, help me find a really great place, you know, put out some feelers, talk to whoever you know, you know, all your networks, whatever you do, do your thing. And uh, so we got together and we did this and lo and behold, I had people come back to me and say, hey, I got this great place, come check it out. It was a beautiful place. I brought my kid over, he looked at it, he liked it. And uh, so now we're living in this wonderful place and all my friends came over for the move. They made it so smooth, it was easy. Easy peasy. I couldn't even believe it. It's like, why was I worrying about that, you know, two months ago, what it was gonna be like. It was just so simple. And then we got it done. And now we're living in this beautiful place and everybody's happy. Wow. So, here's, here's the other thing about that. If you have the thing coming up, you don't get to feel what it would feel like yeah, being done. If you do it from here, you feel that feeling of we're there and you wanna match the feeling, right? But the feeling you usually have when you have something coming up is actually stress. Like I gotta make all this, I gotta, I gotta make all these phone calls and I gotta get all these people. So you feel stressed while you're thinking about it, which makes you not do it. If you see, think of this, if you see getting healthy, for instance, if you see, like if you wanna lose weight, if you see it as I have to get on the treadmill, I have to blah, 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 you're making an association of stress and pain to it, right? But if you're like, when I got to 150 pounds, like I got to move differently, my whole body just didn't have this extra stuff on me, and I got to be in this zone, and I started using it in all these different ways, and my kids started wanting to do it, and then I wrote a book about it. Now you're, you know what I'm saying? Like I got on Oprah, like you could do anything, right? But, you, but you're in this place where that fantasy becomes, oh, this I have to match this, I now want to feel that, right? And, and you understand that. What's beautiful about you was you just nailed it. Like, usually I have someone come up and I can work on them. But you just had the specific thing. Now, let me ask you this. Had you been on the fence about it before you did it? Oh, I totally don't want to move. You don't want to move. <laughs> so what did you feel after you did that? I'm like, I worked out all the details. Right. I worked out all the details. In, in one minute, I worked out all the details. And I, I perfectly saw how it was going to happen. Right. It was beautiful. So how much? Yeah, give a round of applause. I feel like I'm this right now. <laughs> Give a round of applause for this wonderful woman. Um, that's amazing though, because like you, that's a profound thing she just said. In one minute, I arranged all the details. Like think of this, up until then, her mind has been dealing with that for how long? A month. A month. And in one minute, she changed it. And it's because our mind is under this illusion that the thing coming up matters, right? So, this exercise also steers your thinking. Now, what I actually believe is our thoughts aren't real, so you can also just step back and enjoy that. But if you're not at that Buddhist place yet, you can just steer your thoughts any way you want, this way. And what's really weird is you suddenly live from intention versus habit. If you do this exercise with your health, you're not going to go to the McDonald's on the corner, right? If, you, if you're like, oh, I'm going to be this fit, because you, you wouldn't. This exercise I call Calagal, because it's my name and my buddy Diego. Um, he was in the car with me. So you wouldn't Calagal, you know, and then I went to McDonald's, and then I went to blah, blah, blah. You'd say, and then I did this, and why did I do that? And you give yourself the reason why. 
It's really crazy. So, excellent. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, come here. Give round of applause. I inhaled for hair when I heard you. So, I want to know, everyone in the room, point at someone next to you if they didn't do it right. Or if they had hesitancy, or if they were scared. No one? She slapped your hand down, so. But she doesn't want to go up, so that's okay. If you don't want to go up, which usually happens, by the way, if you're the same person that didn't understand this, that's because you're in your head. That's the same person that cares what people think. You know what I'm saying? Because you're in a place of, of what people think. So you move from that place. So that's why also there might be people in the room who didn't do it but don't want to raise their hand because it's the same thing. Um, but is there anyone? Did you have your hand up? Did you? Do you want to do it? Sure. OK. Oh, no, she, she it was her. Yeah, you. The one standing, yes. Yeah. You went back down first. I, I thought I was going to play whack-a-mole with the audience. So, excellent. Morgana. Morgana. That's a cool name. Yeah. You were like Morgan, and then they're like, let's keep going. I was a girl. Yeah. They, they were like, your first, your, your older sister's name was Ghana. And then they were like, we need more. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, you, it, it wasn't working for you. Well, I was having trouble deciding which one, and the one that I chose wasn't really something I wanted. Mm. So that's a big thing too. Yeah. This gives you clarity on what you want. Why is that? And why is that important? Because if you don't know what you want, you'll just settle for everything. And that's why everyone's not everyone, but many people are in relationships they don't want, and in jobs they don't want, and they they hate where they are. So that's beautiful because you got clarity on what you want. Mm -hmm. So you want to try it real quick? Sure. Okay, go for it. I'm proud of you for raising your hand. Okay, so a month ago, I found the most incredible web Infusionsoft guy, and he set up this engagement site that I have, that already people, I'm, I've been enrolling people into this program where their imaginary lover texts them right before bed and at Tet says to them, Kyle, I can't go to sleep because I don't know what you're proud of, and then you text in what you're proud of, and then, then your imaginary lover says, oh, that's fantastic, sweet dreams, I'll talk to you in the morning. And it's just going to be this this viral, continuous way of tricking and seducing people into doing positive things every day that get big results. And I thought it was going to be so hard. But when I talked to the people that I met at JV Alert, so many people knew really good people, and I interviewed them. And I found the geekiest API guys <laughs> who were so turned on by all these ideas of how to solve problems and how to get time zones in New Zealand and Norway and, and they thought it was sexy and people can upload their, their pictures of their imaginary person and it was really, really easy. So that was great. Thanks. But that's what I want. Yeah. Was that good for you? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, was, so was that different than when you did it in C? Yeah. Well, I did something else. I did the thing that everybody that I keep imagining everybody thinks that I should be doing with my business, oh, but I don't really. So good. <laughs> no, I think she realized it's so fantastic. That was an excited like yes, like yeah. You're conditioned to believe you're supposed to do things a certain way. Like we're all stuck in that thing. You do this thing, and that's gone. You keep doing it, and it's gone because it's your heart. You start actually, did you notice you felt yeah. your heart when you were doing part of it? Like you felt, you felt through it. You literally like, no, nah, yes, no, and you kept going. And when you had something that felt good, you went off of that, you kept going, yeah. Yeah. right? Well, I, I felt like I was doing somebody else's dream the first time. So good. Yeah, what, yeah this, I don't even get to shift anyone because you're all doing Sorry. great. So give a round of applause. <laughs> what a lot of people do when they start it. A lot of times is they, I want, I hear a lot of people say what they don't want. Like they say, I started, I stopped being nervous and then I stopped, you know, working at that crappy job and I stopped blah, 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 blah. And you hear the dialogue. It's like, what are you picturing every time? As, as much as that's the secret talking, like it's true. You say, I stopped doing this and I stopped being nervous and I stopped being sick. I wasn't sick anymore. I got rid of the illness. Like, you're completely not, that That will actually be you just really loud saying every problem you have, right? But if you go, I remember when I got really healthy and then I created this thing, and even if you have no clue and you just wanna start with anything, just be like, how I made a million bucks, how I blah, 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 your mind will do that. And of course that's a thing to get you somewhere, but the truth is you're going to be in the moment and that's what's weird. At one point you just start to get to this level that feels just so insane, so good. 
And this thing has caused me to come up with so many different ways to market myself than ways that we usually think. Last week, my Comedy Central CD came out, and it was number one on Amazon all week. And the reason was because I didn't sit there and go, hey, go buy my CD, which is the same as like, hey, come to my event, or hey, come to my thing. I put out a new blog every single day that was in the moment from my heart, and they were just good because I wasn't tied to the future and the past and the result, right? The blogs mentioned that I had a CD, or they had the link out, you know what I'm saying? But that's it, and the blog would be about relationships. And then there'd be this whole thing about relationships. And then the, well, the first day, it was 51,000 views on my website, right? And one time, when I broke up with my second fiance, I had, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other marketers? So, so um, when I broke up with her, I had a contest where you could win her, I decided to have a contest where you could win her diamond ring, right? And we broke up, she didn't care, like, you know, so I had a contest where you could win it. Now I could have pawned that thing, for the $25 I paid for it. <laughs> I instead had a contest where you could win it. This is the contest though. I had a video that was way down on my YouTube stuff that was clean and really good and I wanted it to be on the top because corporate parties would see only one video probably of me and then make a decision based on that. So I wanted the clean one to be at the top of YouTube, right? So I, this, there was a joke on that video about getting back from Catalina Island. So I, in my, to win the diamond ring thing, I said, go to that video and comment on your best way to get back from Catalina Island. So the next thing I know, this, I'm giving away your diamond ring so that radio stations have me on. It's getting all this publicity to the video. Then 60,000 people or so entered the thing, writing on how they got back. And then I said, vote for the winner by writing in the comment section of the same video <laughs> who won it. So the next thing I know, there's 150,000 comments and that video is number one and my corporate party works flew or I could have just given or sold a diamond ring. Like, these are the weird things that happen. We, when Rebecca Black came out last year, she had this viral video, it had 100 million views, right? Remember that song, Friday, right? Jason Moffat and I, and, um, and another friend of mine, spoofed it immediately, no hesitancy. <laughs> just like, yeah, let's spoof it, boom. Next day, we were at like half a million, eventually it was 1.39 million, something like that views, but at the end of that video, I have links to my other motivational stuff, right? Because my goal is to transform the, the, the public and help them shift, but I can use comedy as a way to do it, right? So my point is, there's marketing ways that you have that you don't realize you have that are so big, and if you do this exercise, it'll get you there. So I actually, I feel we're doing this after I spoofed all this. I do have an event. <laughs> um, 